Snorkeling on a coral reef is one of the most memorable experiences for people who visit Hawaii. But this experience is limited to those who are able to swim and to those with financial means to travel here. Everyone else would be cut off from this undersea world were it not for aquariums. Aquariums big and small allow people of all ages and abilities to learn about marine life. These aquariums are so well designed that fishes may live for decades, such as the yellow tangs in this exhibit, which are over 10 years old. Smaller aquariums in hospitals, schools, and homes are therapeutic, educational, and inspirational. These high school students at Central Campus, Iowa's premier regional academy, are learning about the ecology and behavior of marine animals from their aquariums. Here in Hawaii, several pioneers in ocean exploration and champions of coral reef conservation were inspired to pursue their careers by their interest in aquariums when they were children. Dr. Richard Pyle is a world authority on the exploration of deep reefs. He spoke to us about his childhood aquariums and how they shaped his career. My very earliest childhood memories all were about fishes and specifically about just being mesmerized by fishes, being in their presence, being able to watch them for hours on end. Well, I would say my entire career has been shaped by my childhood fascination for keeping aquariums. I mean, most of my childhood, from my earliest years all the way up through college, it was all about keeping these things alive in captivity, which led me to understanding their behavior, which led me to scuba diving and understanding what their natural environment was like. And it really drew me into the entire profession of marine biology was this fascination I had for the fishes and how they live and what they required to live. One of the foremost species kept in aquariums around the world is the Hawaiian yellow tang. After decades of research, there has been a breakthrough in the breeding and rearing of this species in aquariums at Oceanic Institute of Hawaii Pacific University. This is a significant milestone, finally allowing researchers here and around the world to culture many reef species that were long thought impossible to rear. However, due to the technical challenges still involved, it will be a long time before aquarium-bred species such as the yellow tang can meet market demand. For the foreseeable future, yellow tangs and other fish species will continue to be collected from the reef. This is the most highly regulated fishery in Hawaii, and extensive data collected over 17 years reveal that it is sustainable at current levels of fishing. Here, divers from the fishing village of Miloli'i on the island of Hawaii get ready for a dive to collect aquarium fish. Fish are collected without damaging the coral. A simple barrier net is set up and the fish are herded into the net. It looks simple, but it requires patience and skill. The diver is selective. She is keeping only fish of the correct size and releasing fish that are undesirable or not permitted. The fish must be decompressed to minimize expansion of the fish's swim bladder when they are brought to the surface. Excess pressure remaining in the swim bladder is released by a quick procedure using a hypodermic needle. This is no more harmful than an immunization given to any pet. Care is taken to separate some fish that might fight by placing them in individual containers. Clearly, this work is labor intensive, requiring skill, hard work, and expensive equipment. After the work is done, the divers head quickly back to shore. It is important to get the fish into holding tanks in the warehouse as quickly as possible. These fish holding facilities are well designed with elaborate life support systems required to keep the fish in excellent health for several days prior to shipping. Packing fish for shipment has been perfected using techniques that are safe and humane 
and approved by the International Air Transport Association and aquatic veterinarians. Fish are double bagged with a liner to prevent puncture from fish spines. Fish have enough water to swim upright and about two-thirds of the bag is filled with oxygen. Food is withheld from the fish for 24 hours prior to shipment so they will not foul the water in the shipping bags. Fish are shipped this way to survive flight delays up to 24 hours and can survive much longer with minimal or no mortality. These fish are headed to the United Kingdom. This method for shipping is used by fish exporters worldwide. Reef fish have been collected in Hawaii for over 40 years. Not one species has gone extinct from overfishing, nor are any listed as threatened or endangered. The Hawaii Aquarium fishery is sustainable, just like fisheries for Alaska salmon and Brazilian cardinal tetras. We know this because of work conducted by the Aquatic Resources Division of the State Department of Land and Natural Resources. Divers have collected data on reef fish populations since 1999, conducting over 6,700 transects. This program is under the direction of Dr. William Walsh, who has been involved with this research for over 40 years. By examining the patterns of abundance and, uh, through time, we get a really good feel for the overall you know, sustainability of the fishery. But uh, that said, we also are looking at and monitoring you know, the other species which can be collected. And uh, one of the recent initiatives was to limit in West Hawaii which species could be collected. We uh, developed with the West Hawaii Fishery Council what's termed a white list uh, of 40 species. Uh, and these are species that are, tend to be more abundant. They're not the rare, uncommon, uh, highly valued species. So. Uh, we can look at what's going on with those. But, you know, going back to yellow tang, you can see this is a result, uh, this is a kind of a uh, mock-up of the data of, since 1999 in the three different kinds of areas, the MPAs, which were long protected, the FRAs, which became protected back around the beginning of 2000, and then the open areas. And you can see that all of the areas have increased, you know, looking at the most recent couple of years to, to the previous years back in time here, uh, the FRAs, the population of yellow tang, have gone up by 72 percent. And even the, yellow, even the uh, yellow tang populations in the open areas, which is the ones that are being collected, have increased by 31 percent. So uh, it's very significant that all the areas that are increasing, not just the areas that are closed. And when we created this whole uh, network of protected areas, we envisioned it as, a, as serving as a model for what happens if you institute a fully protected no-take area. And even if the uh, second most collected species, uh, and this is the figure showing that, it's very, uh, even more dramatic increases, 56% in the, in the marine protected areas, 47% in the FRAs, and a 54% increase in the open areas. And the population of both these species have increased by millions of fish over that period of time. Unique things about the aquarium fishery is it is the most intensively managed uh, fishery uh, in, in Hawaii. It's also the economically most valuable inshore fishery. It exceeds uh, reef fishes in general. It exceeds even bottom fish in, in, in the economic return of it. So, you know, having a well-managed fishery makes sense both ecologically and economically for the state of Hawaii. Uh, and the, the key difference, basically, is, is the percentage of areas which are off limits to the aquarium collectors, which constitutes 35 percent. 65 percent is open. The aquarium fishery targets small individuals, immature individuals. And if you can have areas that allow those uh, small individuals to mature, and they, for yellow tag, that's you know, somewhere around five to seven years, and then they start reproducing. And for yellow tang, they have a relatively long lifespan of 40 years or so. So for decades after decade, uh, in those areas that are protected, there's successful reproduction. And as they get bigger, the reproduction actually increases. And then uh, almost fortuitously, unlike a lot of other fisheries which target the biggest fish, the, the ones that reproduce most, the aquarium fishery doesn't. And there's almost like a size refuge, even in the open areas, where once they reach a certain size, and that's typically around that size at maturity, they're not really desired for aquarium collecting, and, and, and they're released if they're caught. So uh, even in the open areas, there's very robust populations of the adults. Uh, 
And the third thing with the, with the aquarium fishery, particularly the yellow tang, it's not a desired food fish. So uh, we have three things going for it, and that's unique, literally, in most fisheries to have all three uh, sort of behavioral, biological, and uh, management options making things work. Hawaiian reef fishes can be found in homes and public aquariums around the world. These children are enjoying their home aquarium in Virginia. To get a final perspective on fish collecting and the value of aquariums, we spoke with Dr. Randall Kosaki, NOAA's Deputy Superintendent of the Papahanaumokuakea National Monument. All of the science indicates that this is a very sustainable fishery. We have almost 20 years of good monitoring data on coral reefs where fish collecting occurs. And both the fishes and the coral reef habitats and the fish collectors are doing very well. The reefs are very, very healthy. The fishery is healthy and sustainable. Uh, I would argue that we should treat this like any other fishery. It tends to get treated a little differently because they're ornamental fish rather than food fish. But really, when you come down to it, it's just another fishery. It's like a tuna fishery or a salmon fishery that has certain mathematical characteristics, like, for example, a maximum sustainable yield which is the maximum amount of biomass you can take out of this population on an annual basis without causing the population to decline and eventually crash. So if you're fishing at that level or below that level, this fishery is indeed sustainable uh, in perpetuity, indefinitely. And so I think there is a place in the world for coral reef fish entering the aquarium trade because once they leave the reef, they then become the best possible amb ambassadors for that habitat. The people that care about these fishes care as much as anyone else on earth about the coral reef habitat. It raises awareness in ways that books and magazines and pictures just couldn't. I mean, when it comes to fishes, I love fishes, I love fish books. A picture of a fish is worth a thousand words, but in many ways, a live fish in an aquarium is worth a thousand pictures. The impact is much more visceral. They're much, it's a much more compelling image. It really does compel people to care not just about that fish in the aquarium, but the habitat that it came from and the ecosystems that it came from. So coral reef fishes alive in aquaria and doing well and healthy are one of the best ways to raise awareness about coral reefs and one of the best ways to inspire people to consider conservation measures. And these aquariums, they're distributed well in them, well, far away from coastlines, away from coral reefs. They will make people think about the coral reef habitat and threats that face them. And I would propose that threats to facing coral reefs are not fisheries that are well managed. There are things like global scale events, climate change, seawater acidification, uh, rising sea surface temperatures, coral bleaching, plastics in the ocean. These are all problems that originate far, far away from the coral reef habitat. And this is yet another way to raise awareness about coral reefs and the impacts that we're having on them. Well, I can speak from my personal experience that when I was a kid, there was nothing more fun than going down to the beach, catching a few fish in a tide pool, bringing them home with me and putting them in an aquarium, taking care of them, feeding them, the reading about them in books, learning about them. It really was the catalyst for sort of a marine science education. And that's something you could take as far as you want to or not. I mean, you could just keep the fish in a tank or from, in my case, it drew me to larger and larger aquaria to the point where you can't keep them in your house, and so you seek out the nearest public aquarium. And public aquaria, really, they're about fishes, they're about biology, but really they're educational institutions. You can go to a public aquarium, you can take away as much or as little as you want from it, uh, and it could propel you into a career in marine science, as it did for me. So it's, it's a start. It's opening a door for young people. It may or may not take off, but for those that do, it's an unforgettable experience. They will remember it for as long as they live, that very first aquarium, the very first fish they put in it. Mm -hmm.